Hi, everyone. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. And before I even bring on my guest today, I have to say, I know I've been MIA with doing lives. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Tasha. And if you're not familiar with my journey, I was traveling the world for like 13 straight months. And I was going live and sharing off financial tips and just all kind of stuff, all my business. And I haven't been live since June. So if you have questions for me about what's going on with me, if we have time, I will answer that towards the end of the live. If you are on watching replay, definitely leave any questions you have for me in the comments. But I decided to do this live today to talk about Ghana in December because out of all my travels of traveling 18 countries in 13 months, Ghana was my favorite place to party like I had so I had so much fun in Ghana and so it's dead to December time now where a lot of people are going to be going to Ghana you probably will see it on your social media feeds of people being in Ghana and it may be like what is all the hype about I remember a lot of my friends in the U.S. hitting me up like I know you kept talking about you was going to Ghana but like I see it's like my timeline is flooded so I wanted to do a live today answering um, different questions. Well, not really answer questions, just providing more in-depth tips to how on how to prepare for going to Ghana. So as you're coming in, make sure you drop in where you're from, where you're watching from. You can drop a flag or just say where you're watching from, even on the replay game. So I went in for Kwabe to uh, hop in, but I'll just share a little bit more about my story, um, my experience going to Ghana. I have a few videos up in blog, but I decided to go with a travel company last year, and Kwabe was one of the tour guides that was a part of the company that I booked with, and he was, like, so thorough from, like, making sure everyone was having a good time and felt comfortable. Um, it was about, uh, I don't know, maybe 12 or 15 of us in a group, but he did such a great job making sure that we all felt welcome and like we were learning stuff and having a good time. And so we've kept in contact since I've left Ghana. And I'm like, who else then to bring on and give a perspective and tips on, uh, hold on one second, on what to do in Ghana. I'm trying to see if he's getting on. Then the amazing tour guy who was showing me around, um, the group around. So that's why I decided to do the live. And he was gracious enough to accept. So I'm happy to have him on when he uh, hops on in a second. But um, I was there towards the end of December. I went for Afro Chella, which now is Afro is future. It's something different now. But that's why I went and I didn't know all the things that were taking place. So let's see if we can get Kwame to join us. See, I'm going to add you to the screen. Yay, hey, Kwame. Yay, Tasha. <laughs> How are you doing? You're here. How are you? I'm fine. And you? I'm good. Thank you for joining. And if you're watching um, on a replay um, or live, if we freeze up, we're going to come back, back into the lead, into the live. Sometimes I may freeze up. Kwame may freeze up. But we go, we go be on this thing for until 1 p.m. I got a hard stop at 1. So we're going to be on here for almost an hour. So if you see any glitches, we coming back on one. So uh, thank you again for, for joining me. Um, and I just want to um, say welcome again. And we, 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 we actually talked a little bit yesterday for the first time, like video in like a year. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> already. <laughs> I know time be flying. So how how is how is um I know you well you can tell people where you're based a little bit more about yourself before we get into like our topics today. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I'm Kovina as uh, you introduced me. Uh, I'm from Ghana, West Africa, uh, in Africa, the continent, uh, and a Ghanaian. Yeah, the the. <laughs> <laughs> the vibrant country uh, in Africa that all of you must visit one day. Yes, uh, and I'm a tour guide. Uh, that's what I do here. I'm a travel buddy as well. 
a travel coordinator. So we, we, we make experiences for people. We create the best of experiences for uh, tourists who come around all over the world. Yeah. So that's okay. a little bit. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So there's something short about me. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sharing your information on the screen, like right now. So if you are thinking, if you are going to Ghana <laughs> in a couple of weeks, <laughs> and you were like, I remember watching that live of this guy who was so cool on there, and I got questions, or I may want to book a tour with him, I'm going to be sharing his information throughout the live and replay games too. Like, don't, you know, don't hesitate to hit Kwame up to, uh, to have your tour, like to book a tour with. And we're going to talk about like the importance of like having a tour guide as well. But go ahead, Kwame. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so far, so cool. We are here to talk about Ghana and to know more about the country, what you have to know before you come, the ins and outs, the special places here, and especially uh, our food, our culture, and everything. Yeah. So I'll leave all to you as you ask the question. I'll answer you. Try to make this like a conversation to get everyone yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, so let's just go right into like why is Ghana so busy? Why are every why is everyone coming this time of year? Yeah, so uh uh in every uh, country uh they have a specific time of the year whereby they receive influx of people coming into their country. And Ghana isn't a different one. Uh so popularly in the month of December you find everyone coming to Ghana because uh, from the uh, previous years till now, Ghana has gradually uh, risen or rose to become one of the countries whereby uh, Christmas is celebrated very well uh, in, yes. And what has the factor that leads to or that has led to these uh, growth uh, among influx of people coming into the country. Uh, I'll say the festivi the activities that goes on here, the various concerts that happen here. For example, one, one, one major one that draws more pe most people here is the uh, Afro Future, formerly yeah. known as Afrochella. Yeah, and you have been part of Afrochella and you can tell the number of diasporans who made their way here just to be part of the Afrochella uh, concert. Yeah. However, it, the name has been changed to Afro Future, and it's happening again uh, this year too. So uh, people have started coming here, uh, our culture, our history. Um, the the one, one other thing that make people come here is our history about the slavery. Our, mm -hmm. our ancestral dungeons, the two main ancestral dungeons, that's the Cape Coast and the Elmina dungeons, because many people tend to uh, trace their roots through these places uh, to know uh, their, their indigenous uh, family inside Ghana, to bond here, to pay respect to their ancestors, yes. So those are some activities that make people troop here in the year December. And and basically, December is the last month of the year. So uh, everyone takes their vacation to Ghana to, 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 to rest off here in Ghana. Yeah, so I came, the reason why I originally, I wanted to come to Ghana like in 2018, 2019, um, like a couple years before COVID because it was like year to return. And then I heard about Afro Chella and then I'm like, okay, I gotta go to Ghana, I gotta go to Ghana. And it's just yeah. gotten bigger and bigger every year. And like I was saying in the beginning of the live, like my friends back at home in the U.S. were like, okay, I know you was geeked about going to Ghana, but like my timeline is flooded. Like why? They was like, I feel like I'm missing now. I'm coming next year. I'm coming next year. And so yeah. I'm like, listen, I didn't know it was, it was going to be that crazy until I was there. I was like, oh my God, like this is way better than what I would have ever imagined. So yeah. you, you mentioned like why people come in December, Afro Chella, which is now Afro Future. Um, yes. They come, it's Christmas time. Like some Ghanaians or first generation Ghanaians who may have left and, and part of the diaspora come back for Christmas. 
December is a slow time. Like usually work is a little bit more chill for people. Um, so they take their vacation in Ghana. But what would you recommend? Like five things people must see when they come. Like what are your top five, whether it's restaurants, historical markers? Uh, what do you recommend people check out? Yeah, so um, basically the five main places that everyone should check out when they are in Accra, Ghana, the five top on my list to be uh, number one is the Kwame Nkrumah Museum. Uh, why? Because uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was Ghana's first president and prime minister, and he was the one who led Ghana to independence. So when you visit the Kwame Nkrumah Museum, uh, there has his final uh, remains uh, at the museum, and also the remains of his wife, Fat Kuma. Yeah, so right there, you all the history about uh, and Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, how he fought fervently to lead Ghana to independence. Yeah, so that's my number one. So number two on the list uh, wait, wait, wait. will be... Uh, I got to interrupt. I got to interrupt you. Okay. I got to interrupt you. You were breaking up on my end a little bit. So can you just say the name of the place one more time and where is it located in Ghana? Okay, Kwame Nkrumah Museum. The Kwame Nkrumah Museum, which is located in Accra. Okay. And I heard everything else. So, like, um, yeah. maybe people were watching live, and you didn't catch what he was saying. And you took it. Like, I went there with you, and it was it was a really good place to check out. Um, I remember that, like, uh, being towards like the end of like my days there, going to see uh, Dr. Kwame's, like vital like rest of place so like kind of like his dedicate the de dedication to him um okay what's your second what's your second recommendation that people have to see when they come to ghana okay so my second recommendation is the black square. that's the independent square so uh there is a popular saying that when you come to ghana or when you come to africa and you don't visit the black star then you haven't being to Africa, yes. So uh, at the Black Star Square, you're going to see the Black Star Gate, whereby it has the Black Star on it, which uh, signifies Pan-Africanism uh, amongst African countries, and it serves a beacon of hope in African countries. Uh, how Africans are united and can be as one people. Yes. So uh, the, the Black Star Square or the Independent Square was also built by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. And uh, he, it was built after Ghana gained in the, its independence in 1957. So it was completed in the year 1962. Yeah. So it's one of the places that have to visit. It's, it's one great place whereby you can take lots of pictures. And you can also learn about the history about Ghana's independence at the place too. Okay, and it's a great it's a great place Are to take. Cool? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I was saying it's a lot. It's a great place to take pictures too, and like festivals and concerts happen here too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where most of the concerts are held. That's where most okay. of the concerts are held. For example, the. Uh, the Black Star Line, which was held in January, it was held in January by uh, Chance the Rapper, Vicky Mesa. Uh, it, it had the whole place flooded up with everyone. Yeah. And you know how big the place is. So you can imagine it's huge. when uh, every, every place flooded up. Yeah. So that's how the place goes Afro Nation, some major. And even a uh, global citizen was held there. Yeah. Okay, so we got Black Star Square, Kwame, the out like the outdoor uh, Kwame, Dr. Kwame, the uh, president who led Ghana into their independence, his museum. So those two things, those two places are in Accra. What's your number three, Musty? Okay, so my number three is the Cape Coast Castle. Okay. Coast castle. I prefer to call most people know it as the Cape Coast Castle, but I prefer to call it 
the Cape Coast dungeons, yeah, because uh, this was one of the major places whereby slavery activities went on, whereby 70,000 of people. Okay, we lost, we lost him. He gonna come back. I hate that. If you, if you see us drop off or freeze, we gonna be going to one. So he's back. <laughs> So you you dropped off what you were saying. So you're talking about the Cape Coast Dungeons is your number three recommendation. People come see. We're talking about five musties when you come to Ghana. Like, yes, the party is going on. Like, that's why I came for like Afrochella. And there's tons of parties, which we're gonna talk about nightlife later, like as well, too. But we're talking about like other things you could you should consider when you come to Ghana. So you were talking about the Cape Coast Dungeon. I don't know if you broke. Okay. Can't hear you. So we can't hear you, Kwabi. I'm going to um, remove you and add you back in. I don't know if I went to the Cape Coast Dungeons, but I know I went to Amina. Okay, go ahead, Kwabi. See? I can't hear you. We can't hear you. I'm gonna remove him back. I'm gonna give him a second to let him just log out and come back in. It's always some type of connection issues. If you know, when I was going live all the time, I would be like, all right, let me, I'm coming back, y'all, I'm freezing. Um, no matter where you at, it's usually some type of internet connection. So he's gonna hop back in. Um, and finish telling off the list of places you must see. If you're joining, let me know where you're tuning in from, even on the replay gang. And then any questions you have about Ghana, like that you get anything, we'll answer it. Like, especially I want to hear Kwabe's point of view because he is Ghanaian. And what I like is that he's an actual tour guide. So he has the perspective of actually, you know, working with uh, different foreigners that come to Ghana for the first time. And knowing like what their misconceptions are about Ghana, which we're going to get to um, as well later on um, in a live. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tisha, thank you for joining. Dr. Linda, thank you for uh, joining as well. Um, Kwame will be back on. But in the meantime, it's going <laughs> to run my mouth about Ghana. So um, it's not just December. It's a busy time to go. I think when I was talking to Kwame when I was in Ghana, I think September is another like busy time of the year to go to Ghana. Um, so a lot of people, I think it's just gonna get bigger and bigger um, every year with people going to visit Ghana. Um, and I, when I was there, I did, I was spent most of my time in Accra and I did go to check out, I went to Elmina, Ghana for Elmina, Elmina, the Elmina Castle, which I know Kwabe is probably gonna talk about when he joins back on the live. But, and let's see, he's back here now. So I'm gonna let him pick up talking about the, 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 um, the Cape Coast dungeon. So let's see if I can hear you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, we bet. Yeah, yeah. So the Cape Coast dungeon, okay, so let me, let me um, join the Cape Coast and Elmina dungeons, yeah. So the Cape Coast and Elmina dungeons uh, can be found in the central region of Ghana that's uh, Cape Coast and Elmina respectively. And uh, those two places are the major dungeons whereby slavery happened uh, in the 14th centuries, dating back to the 18th centuries. Yes, okay. so uh, these were places uh, that has uh, dungeons whereby thousands and hundreds of people, both men and women, uh were placed uh inside the cells to be there for three months before being shipped to the caribbeans and the foreign countries yeah so most people travel to these places or most people believe that uh their ancestors were uh, part of these slaves who were sold and later lost their lives not not everyone made it to the uh foreign land not everyone made it to the caribbean land uh some lost their lives yeah. because of the they were leaving in they had to stay in a room with no ventilation for a couple of months 
so that so the time you'll be transported or to the time you get someone to buy you and they they travel outside they work in hard labor and for the fortunate ones they they might survive for the unfortunate ones they lose their lives yeah and once you lose your life you are being thrown into the seas uh so uh this one sacred place and a spiritual place as well whereby people resonate with their ancestors and try to keep in touch with their roots yeah so it's a must visit place for everyone when they come to ghana okay so black star square cape coast uh and not and that's that that's also is that considered like the point of no return door of no return where a lot of people yes. know it is yes yes so these are the dungeons whereby you're going to see the the door of no return so the door of no return basically um signifies slaves being uh, sold out and not returning back to uh their roots that's their countries yeah so the moment you go out of the the door you are not coming back again it's either you leave there and hardly slavery or you you lose your life even as they shape it to uh where you're being taken to yes yeah and i i do remember that experience it was emotional uh for a lot of people being there because like we had a great um tour guide leader when we were there like when you guys all took us there um it was a great tour like i'm yeah. so glad i did it and, and i was like i was so tired the day the day the morning that we left to go because it's not in a crowd like so how far is it from a crowd yeah so uh the cape coast and elmina uh basically are probably it's a three hours 30 minute drive from accra yes so maximally it should be four hours but minimally it should be a three hours and a 30 minute drive from accra okay um what's your number four Which of course, so my number was... four is the Makola Market. Okay, I the can't feel that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Miss Shoe, I'll be like, keep it up with the list for people who are like watching on a replay of things. And I'm like, okay, I can't spell that. So, what, what place are you describing? <laughs> okay. Have you heard about the Makola Market? No, I don't think we, I don't think we go. The Makola yeah I didn't please, please yeah so uh market is um one of the biggest markets in ghana which is situated in accra yeah so it's a citadel of many things everything if you literally need anything in your region and you don't get some you'll find one in the macula market yeah so that's where you see flags of market women influx people trading all sort of styles making money each and every day they literally deal in every business in macula mass so uh literally you find yourself in ghana in accra and you're trying to find something you get said if you should ask someone next on the street that what they will tell you is to, you'll find some color yeah so macula is is one of the top markets uh in ghana I did go. I like I did go. Um I did after like our whole like we were together for like four or five days after the tour was over. Like you connected me and a few people from the travel group with the um driver and we did go. So I did go to the markets. I had to just think about it like, yeah, I went after the experience with you. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, you, so have you know how the place is how yeah i do know how the place is and i wish i would have been vlogging yeah. so i have a i do have a few vlogs from my time in ghana um on the channel so make sure you check it out but i wish i would have vlogged to capture it but it's a lot going on and you can't go to ghana you can't come to a cry and then not have some some uh keepsakes to take back so um i had bought uh shea butter some shirts dresses fans um all of that from the market so i agree like you definitely want to have stuff you know you especially that was 
that wasn't my first time in Africa, but a lot of times people go to Ghana first as their first experience going to Africa. So you got to go shopping and get there. So what's your last place, uh, Kwame? Kwame? Yeah. I don't know. I think it may be a little bit of delay. So my last place uh, will be the Labadi Beach. Okay. I'm with you on it. Are we good now? <laughs> Labadi Beach. Yeah. So my last place will be the Labadi. Yeah, Labadi Beach. Okay, and I'm putting so all the Labadi the... Beach. Uh, not just. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Keep going. Keep going. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So the Labadi Beach is not just any other normal beach that knows. Yeah. So uh, during this first season, uh, let's say on the 24th, 25th, going down to the 1st of January, if you should find yourself at the Labadi Beach and you don't know your your way ins and outs there. Probably you end up sleeping there till next morning because <laughs> you will see a whole lot of people. <laughs> You're going to see a, a whole lot of people there. I wouldn't lie to you. I wouldn't lie to you. It's one of the best places that whenever you come to Ghana, you should feel, especially during the weekends, festive seasons, because you see a whole lot of whole uh, Pan American, Ghanaians, uh, people coming all the way from different African countries, uh, tourists who are spending their, their uh, times in the be at the beach doing a whole lot of activities, horse riding, quad biking, uh, having the sea, chatting with friends. So. It's, it's one of the vibrant beaches we have in Ghana. And I would like everyone to explore and have a feel of it whenever they come into the country. Yes. Yeah, and everything, your top your top five the recommendations, I've been to all of them. And yeah, like that's where a lot of stuff is going on at Labadi Beach, especially like parties. That's why I was tired when we went to Elmina Castle because I was at Labadi Beach to like five in the morning, six in the morning. So yeah, that's why. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's definitely a must see. <laughs> I agree with you on that one. Yeah. Yeah. So like <laughs> I, I I appreciate you sharing the top five places to see. And again, if you're watching. Um, make sure you leave questions, even uh, even replay, leave your questions in the comments and we might do another live. Um, but I I will share yeah. my I'll share my take on benefits of working with a tour guide, but I want to just I want you to share like um uh, what's your perspective when people come to Ghana with or without a tour guide? Like I guess what's the benefits of working with someone like you uh, when coming to Accra? Yeah, so um, with, with this, I feel it's very significant and so important to work uh, with a tour guide whenever you come into the country, especially if you haven't been to the country before. It will be very great for you to have a tour guide uh, who will be showing you to this. Uh, be For, your for break, lunch, your break. for breakfast, attractions, which are very good. Tour guide, you then. Yeah, so, Kwabe, like, you gonna have to start that over because you were kind of freezing a little bit on my end. Like, every other word was a little choppy. So, I'm gonna bring you back into the stream and see if that works better now. So, okay. Okay. All right, are we cool now? You're good. Talking about uh, with you, which is very significant, yeah.
because um, a well-qualified tour guide, a professional tour guide, literally knows ins and outs of the country, Accra, uh, most of the, the places, especially you do an Accra city tour, or whereby all, all the places have a site. Your tour guide to brief you about the history of these places. Your tour guide is going to tell you about the do's and don'ts about specific places you visit. Your tour guide will be able to request places that you can go and have re relaxation, which you can go and have activities, engage in activities, you can go and have, you can have and all these uh, are accepted by the tour guide. So imagine yourself coming into the country, not knowing anyone, and you tell yourself, okay, then tomorrow I'm going to Accra. What are you going to do there? You definitely need someone to take you to Square. Definitely need to buy to take you to places to significance whereby you can go. And having a tour guide uh, at your at your side too can help you a lot uh, when it comes to the exchange of currencies, because uh, they tend to know or we know the uh, currency so much. Yes. So uh, if you're not familiar with the Ghana CDs and you'd want to change some dollars into CDs and you don't have a tour guide right with you, you don't know. Maybe the person you're changing the money might tend to uh, dupe you. Or, but we'll have a tour guide with you. This person can take it upon himself to change the currencies for you and do all other uh, secretarial works for you also. And also, uh, when it comes to benefits of working uh, with a tour guide, I would say you are safe with a tour guide because uh, uh, for assurance, you know that you, ha you are with someone who knows where you're going. You are with someone who knows uh, the visions you'll be going. You don't have about the goodness. So this all guy. You're breaking up a little bit, so. Um, design and I using or using tree. Okay, so you pause. So go ahead. You can say something, but like um, when you were really going, you were talking. I got the part about like if you're joining us, we're talking about the benefits of working, like having a tour guide when you come to Ghana. Y'all know I was traveling the world by myself. Um, but for Ghana specifically, I wanted a certain type of experience. So I decided to go ahead and pay the money to have a tour guide, like have everything set for me. I didn't want to DIY. Like, yeah, we just share, share with you the places you can go. Do people go to Ghana by themselves? Yes. But we, if you go to Ghana by yourself, I do recommend that you hire tour guides for certain things just because they give you that background. Probably mentioned something I wasn't even thinking of, like helping you change over your money like the currency from USD from my perspective, because I'm from the US to uh, Ghana CDs. Uh, it's a lot smoother with that. The safety aspect as a woman, like people come from me all the time about talking about safety in Ghana. And did I feel safe in Ghana? Yes. There was a few hiccups, but I will say this. December is a crazy time to be there just because it's so many people, right? And I love it, right? But as a woman yeah. and you don't know where you you don't you look you stand out or whatever. And so I like when I was with y'all, I was like, I gotta worry about nothing. Like everything was handled. Like you brought up the language. So I'm gonna let you jump in right here too about like with people when Ghanaians may be speaking another language and the benefits of having a tour guide with you. So I think there's, I don't know if you're saying anything, probably I was saying, you can finish, you you had left off right before you started breaking up. You were talking about, like, yes, you may be in yes. certain places so where that, people you're speak right. uh, you're truth. Sure. So uh, having having a tour guide. Yes, 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 exactly. So as I was saying, you'll feel safe with a tour guide. It's better for you to have a tour guide because you always feel safe with a tour guide because he or she knows where you guys are going. You are secured about the places you are visiting. 
You don't need to bother about how to accessibility because it takes upon it, him or herself to uh, get you accessibility to the place, have an experience at wherever you are going. Yeah, so safety is one is one of the major things that you should uh, consider uh, because of having a tour guide by yourself when you come to Ghana, yeah. No, I, I agree. And I remember, I remember, <laughs> I remember we were in Black Star Square, Independence Square, and we were doing, we were doing photo shoots. Yeah. And, and <laughs> we were in the photographer, I remember Kofi yelled at me because I had like veered off on doing photos. He's like, stay with the group. <laughs> I was like, isn't that serious? And he was like, we just want to make sure everybody yeah. has the issues. I was like, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. So, so one thing about uh, one thing about Ghanaians is that uh, uh, welcoming. We love people. So, anytime anyone tends to meet the uh, American, then okay, he was wrecking every other word. So, I'm gonna let him. Join and come back in. So if y'all been doing, just bear with us. This side, this time is on his ear. But y'all know I'll be having with some back today. I used to have issues with the stream too. So Fabe, um, log completely off and then log back in. So I removed you from the stream, but just um disconnect completely and come back in. That seems to work better versus just me adding you to and from the stream. Go ahead, yeah, disconnect and then join back in. But I was telling y'all a story about like we were in Independence Square. So this like the tour group that I was with, they had a photographer with us. And y'all know I love taking my pictures. So I <laughs> got a lot of good candy shots. And we were in Independence Square. I was like, y'all taking too long to get to me. So me and my friend, <laughs> we just started doing our own photo shoots. The photographer yelled at me, rightfully so, because he was like, y'all just veering off. Y'all don't even know where y'all going. I was like, that was, yeah, I get you. And when we're talking about safety, um it's not like it's like oh my god it's like you can't be by yourself or whatever that's not what i'm saying and that's not what probably saying in december there's so much going on it's just like if you were in new york city uh times square during the ball drop <laughs> right it's like it, it's not that many people but it is like that chaotic stuff and so people wherever you go they may be looking for a come up that's not just in ghana that's everywhere so I know some people get offended when I say that. It's not just, a, it's everywhere you go. If it's a lot of tours in one spot, you know people are going to be trying to look like, how can I get over on these tours type of thing? And just like uh, panhandlers are trying to get you to buy stuff all the time and won't leave you alone. And a lot of times the um, panhandlers that are in these spots, they are men. So they keep trying to get you to buy stuff and it's like, I'm good. And they won't like let up. Um, a lot of times, and this is, again, this is not just in Ghana. This I've experienced this in Egypt, um, in different countries, wherever, in Barcelona <laughs> as well. Like when you're by yourself, you're a woman. We panhandlers who like try to get you to buy stuff. And one of the benefits that I like of like being with a tour tour group, especially having like men as tour guides, they didn't even try it. Like when Kwabe was given a tour. Um, when we stopped at Independence Square, it was like these guys who kept trying to sell stuff. And he was like, stop, go away. On the flip side, when I was there by myself and just a girl I had met in Ghana while I was there, we were going around. And it was like they wouldn't let up. It was annoying. Right. But when having a tour guide with us, we ain't had them problems. And again, this has a lot to do with it being December and a lot of people. So he's back. So I'm going to let him finish where he was leaving off about like the benefits of working with a tour guide. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, um, one other thing, uh, one major benefit, uh, you you have or you, can, you tend to get of working with a tour guide, is the language barrier. So you know, some of not all the vendors in Ghana, especially at the marketplaces or at the art centers, whereby you tend to purchase. Uh, 
art work and cultural stuff. Not all the vendors in Malaysia, most of them communicate in culture. So, have a, a tour guide with you, uh, opportunity or guide negotiate, especially with what you're going to buy the prices for you in their local language, in the local language with the vendors for you, so that you don't have to go through the stress of negotiating uh, prices, the stress of understanding. He's frozen again. He's saying you don't have to deal with the stress of negotiating prices. So you about to see. And thank y'all for your patience. If you watching on a replay, you know, when he drop off or he paused, I was gonna fill in. <laughs> I kind of have an idea where he's going with this, especially like since I had, you know, when I was in a crowd, like Kwabe was my tour guide, but He's talking about you don't have to deal with the stresses of like negotiating the markets because it was like when you go to the, when you're in different countries and they hear their different accent, the price go up. That's just not a Ghana thing. That's just everywhere in my travels. The price go up. And for example, like when I was um, if I'm with, if I'm in Southeast Asia, they know they're like you are not from here. When you are in Ghana, it's like okay, it may or where there's a lot of African descent, it may be like, okay, we may not know, we can have a tell. But I'm just saying that it's an example. So the price may go up and you don't have to worry about negotiating back and forth because again, going back to the currency, I mentioned this in my video before, like things you need to know about Ghana. Like CDs is king. Their currency is king. It's not like when you go to Jamaica or Mexico, you can go with USD and it's all fine and dandy. They don't want no USD. Um, they want their currency, rightfully so. Now, when you're negotiating, you're trying to get the get the price lower. They know the currency and they change out better than you. So that's where the benefits of a tour guide comes in to play because we don't deal with that currency every day. Um, I went when I went to the Makola markets that Kwabe was mentioning. He had connected me with a driver, and they did. The negotiating for me and not even just that like i had a set amount of currency and i knew what i was working with and they would double check to make sure like you need to make sure that they, you understand that what you're paying like you may be thinking what is this in usd like you gotta really think about it in our currency all right you back <laughs> yeah yeah i'm back yeah so as i was saying uh having a tour guide will help you uh with the negotiation aspects of when you are purchasing uh, items on the local markets, yeah. And also it will help you uh, get it easy in getting items because basically you can't communicate in the local language whereby most of these vendors in the marketplaces communicate because not all, not everyone can speak in the English language. Yes, so uh, having a tour guide get best off by uh, having to negotiate for commodities, having to put the language to communicate in. Yes. So all this uh, will help you when you have a tour guide uh, with you. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree with you more. And like, so we're getting ready to wrap up. We didn't get to everything I wanted to cover today. So we, that means we're going to have to come back on eventually or just do a video together and drop it. Um, but I want to end on like what are the big, what are some of the biggest misconceptions of, about Ghana that you experience when people come to come to Ghana or this is their first time coming to Africa, the continent for the first time. And so, what are some biggest misconceptions? Yeah. So, so one one of the major misconceptions that uh, sometimes I get surprised when. Uh, I see people accent or people feeling towards as uh, language. So I I thought that uh, Ghana is a speaking country. For me being a tour guide, I understand the English language, the speaking language. People accept uh, and understand very can't 
uh, fluently uh, to their hearing. Yeah, I think that's a big misconception because uh, if you have if you have a, a, a travel buddy, a tour guide with you, and that person is a professional, understands the job, he or she uh, is able to communicate very well in the English language. Yeah, and not even just the travel buddies or the tour guide. Most people in Ghana understand the English language very well and can communicate very well. So it's one big misconception that people have, uh, which is not true. Yeah. So you broke up a little bit, so I'm going to recap. So Kwabe was saying that one of the biggest mis misconceptions is that people are not aware that so many Ghanaians speak English. Um, like he gave the example with the markets where people may are likely to speak tree in the markets, but like they will understand English, right? You may not think they understand English, like, but they do. Um, but I don't think like in the city and everything else, like people are speaking, like they speak English, you know? And a lot of people may come and think like, oh, do they even speak English over there? It's like, first of all, don't say over there, say the country. <laughs> and yes, they do speak, Ghanaians speak English. Yeah. Um, so that's, I, I agree. That's one biggest misconception that I got when I was telling friends and family that I was going to Ghana. Like, what language do they speak? Do you have any another one before we hop off? Yeah, so another misconception is uh, Ghana, Ghana not being safe, Ghana being unsafe, yeah. I think that's also one of the biggest misconceptions because uh, I, I, I see the country you would ever find uh, only of being how we with people how to cope new person we see uh, in our midst uh, that makes Ghana safe for everyone to live in because we have diasporans who have come and uh, to settle back here in the country and living here are working in the country now setting up business businesses and living life as a normal human being as they will live in the state. Yeah. So uh, it's a big point that most people every yeah it's conception. You froze again so um you were talking about safety can you just say that last part again you were breaking up yes yes so i, I was saying that uh ghana is for every yeah so that's the option that made some You woke up again, but we 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 talked we talked about this when I was there. So I'm gonna see if you if you come through clear now. Go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna. Can y'all hear me? Let me know, cause I'm just talking, and I'm thinking it's him. It could be me. I could be the problem. <laughs> so he's still in here. Let's see. I can't hear you, Kwabe. He's saying he can't hear me. So I think you need to come out and come back in again. But um, we talked about this a little bit yesterday about safety. And I just said it before. And it's like, okay, I, we talked about the benefits of working with a tour guide is, you know, you feel more safety, more safe, especially as a woman. But I want to be reiterate. I did not feel like any time any violence was going to take place with me, like in, in a crowd, like at any time. Um, my frustration came from I'm not used to like all the panhandlers and just a lot of people just in general. Um, but that was one of my issues from a safety perspective. It's no, it's not any, it's not any more unsafe than being in the U.S. In my opinion, like I'm from Metro Detroit, so it's like I always say, "What do we see when you turn on the news?" Like, <laughs> it's like that type of uh, thing. So he was just breaking up. Um, yeah, thank you, Linda. We can, uh, so I'm gonna bring you back in. We only have a couple more minutes, but I just wanna talk about safety. Cause whenever I bring up safety in any of my videos, 
Ooh, y'all got to be coming for me. Like, it's, don't say that because, like, you don't, when you say things like that, people don't want to come. I'm like, listen, safety can be a concern wherever. I'm not, I'm from the U.S. I'm, I definitely am not going to act like, ooh, I feel super safe over here because that's not, that's not the case. It's more of a, um, from a woman's perspective, men constantly approaching you and then from a the panhandling uh, perspective. And in the U.S., it's kind of like people don't come up to you. They don't invade your personal space. And there's a difference there in Ghana. So that's when the, when Kwabe is talking about misconceptions of safety. It's not violence going on. It's not like, oh my God, is something going to happen to me? Someone going to snatch you? That's not happening. So I'm going to let him um, conclude on that. Okay, you bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Good to be back. So uh, to conclude on the safety aspect, uh, I'll, I'll still uh, reiterate that Ghana is safe for everyone. It happened again. So we go have to. We gonna have to figure it out. You, I can't hear you. We can see your lips moving, but we can't hear you. <laughs> um, so because we are almost at time, Bobby, we're gonna have to we gonna figure this out because you have a lot of information. So whether that's us just recording a video and posting it live and doing a premiere and answering questions in the chat, we may do it that way. But um, I just want to end on this note. Hopefully we can hear Kwame say bye, but everything you just said a minute ago, we couldn't hear you. But um, I wanted to share his information again. Um, I got to know Kwabe from the bigger company that I book with, and he does freelance tours. Um, it's his own independent thing. So Washington Replay, definitely check, um, email him. He is on Instagram at uh, Travel with Kwabe. So just Kwabe, like as you, I, he said Kwabe, he's Kwabe, but we call him Kwabe in the group. Um, it's shown on the screen, so you can do Travel with Kwabe. Carbonate on Instagram. You can find him that way. Email and WhatsApp is a good way to get a hold of him. And again, he's in Ghana. So the country code is not plus one, it's plus two, three, three. But this is his information. Um, I never had any issues with Kabe. He never tried to come with a sob story of trying to like play you or whatever. He's he's a real deal. He's authentic and he knows his history. And I love my history. And we didn't get to talking about like nightlife. Kwame is about that nightlife. We had so much fun going out and everything. So you get both sides of the uh, uh, both sides of the coin with Kwame. He gonna teach you that history. We didn't get to the food either. He gonna take you to the best food spot and he gonna take you to the best nightlife. And you gonna have fun as a woman. You are gonna feel safe. Kwame is very respectful. And you feel like, okay, I'm like, I'm with my big brother. Like, ain't nobody going to bother me because Bob ain't here. And he going to dance. He going to bring the vibes, too. So, uh, any yeah. final things? Hopefully we can hear you, too, because we about to hop off. Yeah, yeah. So, my my final uh, word is uh, one Okay, we still, uh, it still, it was still, it's still choppy, Kwame, so we still can't so, hear you, but go ahead. I think I can hear you now. Go ahead. This is less. No, we can't hear uh, you. It's, we just go in with your smile because it's so choppy. So I hope. Every come to we know we see we know he's saying so positive. Now? Okay. Yeah, so I when you say can you hear me now? I heard you that one time. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you all need to come to Ghana. You you can come to Ghana. Have you Experiences, and I'm ready for you. I'm forever. Ready.
ready for you. You need to come and have the best of your experiences in. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Ghana be there. I'm you. gonna be there. Yeah. <laughs> Got it ready for you and for me. So, I love Ghana. Thank you again so much for joining. I know it was choppy at the end. We are going to maybe record earlier because we did test this out yesterday and we had no problems. But you know, when you test stuff out and you go live, it'll work like that. So, uh, we will probably just do a video and share some of the things we didn't get to. The food, and y'all know I love food. Every vlog, every video, I'm talking about food. My mom is saying I was greedy since I was born, and it's true. I love my food. So uh, we didn't even get to that or nightlife. But I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. Again, replay gang, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. Um, and we will yeah, do another yeah, you video. Need to come. Yes, you need to come. We go in on that. Thank you, thank you for coming on Kwame, and thank you guys for watching. Until next time, bye. <laughs>